Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Caleb Benningfield. I'm head of Lake House Strategy at Imperity, which I think roughly translates to I've been at there pretty much the whole time, and now I do a lot of weird things, and they're mostly sort of related to our Lake House stuff. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, Lake House architectures, and specifically uh, talk uh, to one of our uh, you know most prolific builder customers, Vale Resorts, and the way that they're using Imperity and, and our Lake House CDP concept. Uh, to, to, you know, kind of modernize and, and uh, manage a very complex stack. Um, in terms of agenda here, uh, first, what is Lake House CDP? It's a, a complicated space, and I want to give you a little bit of a breakdown of how we think about the CDP and, uh, and, and how we have sort of uh, evolved it over time to uh, adapt to the modern Lake, Lake House architecture. And then uh, we're going to do a little fireside chat uh, with Mitchell Weiss, who's uh, here from Vale Resorts. I'll introduce him at the, at the time, so you know, build up that hype and give him a nice warm welcome when he, when he gets up there. And then we'll open it up and let people do a little bit of Q&A at the end. And of course, anything we don't have time for, find me you know, just after it, or we have an Imperity booth. Uh, I'll be hovering around there too. So let us hop in here. So this is a sales slide. I uh, put it in here because it's pretty. And then I'm going to use a slide that's less pretty after that. But uh, basically, the whole idea here is that, uh, you know, uh, we take the, the term CDP very seriously. I actually don't like the, the area of CDP at this point because it is kind of been uh, morphed into whatever the company that's selling their CDP wants it to be. And in many ways, that's become like a replacement for marketing automation or a focus on visitors and real-time event routing or a concept that you build. And so it's sort of hard for buyers to understand what CDP means. But we take it pretty literally. It is a data platform designed specifically for managing customer data. So it is meant to plug directly into your data bricks and give you a, a, a bunch of tools for unifying that data and then, of course, uh, uh, making it as available as possible for you to power all your marketing stuff. Now. Um, because I'm in control, I don't have to do the sales slide here. And because this is Databricks, I wanted to do uh, a, a slide that I designed, so that's why it doesn't look very pretty. But it's, I figure everybody in here, if it's a Databricks conference, knows how to write a little bit of code and maybe wants a little bit more detail about what that actually translates to. So uh, the Lake House CDP. Start off with the storage layer bit here. Uh, basically, we provision a tenant. We're hosted in AWS or Azure. Uh, that is a, a dedicated workspace for uh, the, the customer. And then we connect that to cloud storage. And so that will be in their account. It can be uh, you know, basically uh, set up with either just a role access via traditional cloud storage or Delta sharing. And the whole point is that uh, we will store all of the data in that cloud storage location in an open, uh, in an open storage format that basically makes that a sort of uh, a modular way to plug that into a wide variety of different uh, tools along the way. And, and then we need to get access to the data. And so now what, we start, uh, what you're going to start to see here is a lot of the features that when you watch the demos on the website or if you, you know, want to talk to me afterwards, I'll tell you about. But basically, we have a layer of, that does what today is called ETL, like a SaaS ETL, connectors to, to automate pulling data from all your various systems uh, in a raw form. Then we'll use a, a, a semantic layer to tag that information. So you don't have to like adhere to a schema to use Imperity. You basically say, this field has an email address. I'm going to use an email tag. This field has a, uh, you know, a revenue amount. I'm going to give it a revenue tag. Then uh, the big kind of thing here that I don't want to over, over, uh, undersell, feel free to dig into our website. We do a real big set of deep dive because this is our bread and butter, is our stitch process. Now this takes all of the raw data in that semantic layer and it uses up to 45 different machine learning algorithms to generate a first party identity graph. So a like graph of all of the different Calebs that are represented in that data with weights, transparency, everything you would need, you know, uh, different data sets for uh, different types of needs, but it's very much, uh, it generates a, that, uh, a kind of the, the best ID graph on the market uh, out of your own data. And then it also propagates that out to all of the other raw data. So it puts the Imperity ID on the transactions, standardizes the transactions, those kind of things. And so then once we have that ID graph, we layer on a set of, of models. And so a unified you know, uh, customer with merge rules, standardized transactions, et cetera, and basically giving you the best possible asset. So now you're going to, you know, by using these, you should at this stage have 
a you know, standardized, unified view, cleaned up, flexible, shaped in the right ways for your business. And then it's all about giving access to it. Now, as you can see, since the storage is gonna be here and it's all already available via Delta sharing, your data engineering teams will now have this great asset. You can go build whatever you want on it and have this full, complete view of your customer. But there's a bunch of other areas that businesses will need. And so we want to make this available everywhere. So of course, we have our own marketer and segment uh, style UI along with campaigns to let the, uh, the, the business focused teams build their audiences and deploy them to paid media or whatever they want. And then we have a reverse ETL style offering. So one of the more common use cases uh, that we have is, you know, we will have people who use Salesforce Marketing Cloud or maybe Adobe uh, uh, Experience. And, you know, we basically are the profile layer that creates and manages that and then keeps that up to date for them. We also uh, can, you can build uh, real-time APIs on it. So basically you can use SQL to design the data and the row that you want, select the key, and then these are built for thousands of lookups a second. So plug those APIs into your site personalization. You'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that with Veil later, but the, the kind of point is that it's a flexible, easy way for you to build different use case focused UI or APIs. And then of course, just the ability to write SQL access. Now this is all great, but I think one of the key elements for me that excites me is that like, Everybody talks about what you do to build your asset and use your asset, but I also think that we've really prioritized living with your asset. So we have an entire workflows layer for automating this in different ways. And, uh, and then we have uh, two, my favorite innovation, which is sandboxes. And so sandboxes, basically everything that I'm talking about here, all of these rules, all of these models, all of these uh, segments that you build, are all managed is in a sort of Git style layer that also will do a cross entity validations and basically make it easier for you to make changes. And so you can say, I wanna draft, I wanna add a new data set to my stitch graph, make a sandbox, try that change in that sandbox, production infrastructure, you know, uh, version managed against production. Oh, I, you know, Q, QA it there, I'm ready. You can put it out uh, and, and that team can take weeks, but then maybe a, marketer, a t marketing team just wants to add a couple of fields. You can make another one for that project. And so it basically means you don't have to do the whole manage your own set, uh, staging environments or dev environments, migrations, that kind of stuff. And then, and so the kind of end result is you have dedicated features for resolving and maintaining your profile data, for democratizing access no matter how you want to interact with it. And then of course it's all stored with a lake house uh, centric uh, you know, storage layer that, that, that's really designed to give you full ownership of the data and of course make it always available directly in your Databricks account. All right, so that is my like, like more technical version of what a Lake House CDP is. Now I want to talk a little bit about how it gets used in the actual real world. And in order to do so, I want to invite uh, to the stage, if you everybody give a little round of applause for Mitchell Weiss. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mitchell. Um, so um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your role at, uh, at Vail Resorts? Yeah, hey everybody, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm Mitchell Weiss, I lead our enterprise data engineering team for Vail Resorts. I've been with the company uh, for just about four years, um, and primarily focused on you know, being that sort of lifeblood, lifeblood throughway for data that powers the enterprise, whether it's analytics, marketing, you know, of course, our resort operations and the data that they need as well. Um, you know, so really focused on bringing a cl cloud native perspective to the way in which we store, modernize, make our data accessible, and, um, and Imparity is a, you know, a critical, critical feature to that overall decision flow and marketing tech stack. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, and, and so and just for clarity, Vail Resorts, if you're not necessarily familiar with the overarching brand, uh, 42 different uh, uh, mountains. It's all like, we're talking about like uh, uh, ski resorts and stuff. And so uh, one of the things that, that I think is interesting that I, and one of the reasons I'm excited to have you here is that Vail as a business is not, like I think a lot of people talk about sort of standard retail style businesses, e-commerce transactions and, and point of sale transactions. And I think that's all good, but the enterprise space needs things that are tailored to their business, because every business has different needs. Some people have reservations, they have subscriptions, they have all kinds of things that don't fit into more traditional models. Uh, t tell me a little bit about Vail as a business yeah. and sort of the unique elements of that that, that, that make it uh, more interesting and kind of drive that need for a tailored uh, ar architecture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Vail is, a, is yeah. a, a fairly unique business that I think you know, poses, it poses some challenges in the way we develop uh, solutions for, for any number of use cases, but it also I think that same, those same complexities tend to lead to a real advantage about the way we think about the data life cycle. So as you can imagine, Vail, ski resort company, um, 
primarily in people's minds that's happening in the winter. Uh, so we do have a very seasonal nature to our business. And because of that, we actually split, the way I would describe our business is actually fairly split between an e-commerce company for half the year um, and then an events, you know, an experiences company uh, through the winter season. So right now we're, of course, selling passes, uh, and that's a huge part of our business, um, huge part of our marketing focus. Uh, and, but that will transition to more personalized micro journeys as we get into the season to get you to revisit, to get you to enjoy your, your time with us. So we have very different paces. Um, and you know, while that can be challenging just from, a, you know, we're not an always on e-commerce company, we can't roll out features. You know, if we miss it, we're waiting a year, basically. Um, but for us, I think the benefit is it's allowed us to develop a really mature understanding of the way in which we use data to make decisions. And you know, marketing isn't often some silo You're doing its own thing, right? Our strategy, our analytics is all connected to the same data. So we're developing our business strategy, we're developing the audiences that we think are important from a, just purely from a business context. And those are flowing directly into our marketing applications to activate. And then of course, you know, the sort of that holy grail of that cycle of the data coming back in. Um, and so for us, you know, making sure that every component of that architecture and ecosystem, you know, isn't creating a silo, right? We have a very complex business. As you said, we sell passes, we sell ski school, we have lodging, we have on mountain dining, we have events. Um, you know, making sure that we're not unnecessarily copying data to different locations um, and that, that, you know, it's easy to say, and I think it's like uh, no one in this room would disagree with it, single source of truth, like that's what everybody wants. And that's actually like our guiding principle when we develop new technology, um, build or buy, uh, is to make sure that every piece of that, you know, allows us to preserve that, that sort of guiding principle. That's cool. And so, I mean, I think that, you know, one way to sort of summarize the way I think about the work we've done at Vail is, you know, everybody's got their local mountain that they go to, mm -hmm. and it's important that that is still a very personal experience. You know, I, I grew up on the Snoqualmie Pass and in kind of the, the Seattle area mountains, and, and you know, deep-seated, I repeat customer there, I'm sure I would show up in a, in a data set as, you know, a loyal member. But then uh, when I'm doing vacations, I want to go to other mountains. And so, and each of those will have its own identity in there. So, you, so one of the challenges for your company is, is it fair to say is, uh, making sure that, that they still have an authentic, you know, each mountain has its own business, its own experience, but for your team, you need to think about it in terms of a life cycle that spans pretty much the whole world, totally. because, you know, when you go traveling on vacation, you want to make sure that the behaviors that I had on my local mountain, uh, you know, are valuable for you to tailor what to recommend for me when I, you know, fly out to, to you know, yeah. Colorado. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's really interesting to think about, uh, you know, in the technology space, everything you want to do, you're sort of driven to scalability, right? Um, but the experiences are so unique. So how do you combine both of those things together? Um, and I, you know, I think, again, sort of core to our philosophy um, as a company, experience of a lifetime, that's our, that's our motto. Um, and what that means is the elements that should be scalable, the elements that should be repeatable that are best fit for every consumer, easy, right? Like we want to make sure we get that in front of you, whether it's buying a pass, but then you dig a layer beneath that and the nuance starts to emerge, right? Like what pass is right for you? Is it gonna get you access to the resorts that you have loved in the past? Is it gonna, do we wanna promote a pass that's gonna get you access to different resorts because we know that those are maybe similar or we know you're maybe in a different life stage and you, know, you want something that's maybe a bit more family oriented than you know, jumping off cliffs. So um, you, you can do both of those in the same weekend, but, um, but yeah, we, and, and in order to facilitate that, like we're not a one size fits all, and we want our guests to feel that too, that they're not you know, just another consumer at our mountains, that we're actually looking to make sure that they have the best time that they can. Uh, there's a lot of mountains out there. We, we are very fortunate to own and operate many of the world-class destinations to visit, um, but we know that, you know, especially skiers, they. You know, skiers and snowboarders and people looking for winter destination trips, they have a lot of really exciting places to go that might not always fit under umbrella. So making sure that we have that full personalization engine that allows us to send a journey to someone, but within that journey, you're gonna find something unique is critical. And you know, that's where sort of a lot of our data science and machine learning um, comes into play. Got it. Yeah, and I think that that's, you know, uh, that, that, that kind of unique element of your business is part of why I really like, was excited to talk about this. You know, I threw a slide up that's sort of a zoomed out version of 
of it, but I wanted to kind of be able to take you know the earlier context of what Imperity does and and uh, and and talk a little bit about the types of use, usage that that Vale is is kind of been building using Imperity as as a core component of some of that. Um, you know, as you can see at the bottom, you see a little bit of a summarized view of basically where we. Uh, we, we're taking raw data, you know, uh, from their data lake, and so, there, so a lot of the work is putting it into Azure infrastructure. And then we're resolving that into that ID graph and, uh, and, and and turning that into those profiles. And then a lot of it is about making uh, that data available for all of the varying personalization points. So one of the key elements in there is that Databricks bit. And so tell me a little bit about it. You, your team's responsible for uh, the custom machine learning models, and so you've built. Uh, you know, recommendations based on that kind of nuanced, complex view of, you know, do you recommend lessons or do you recommend, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, certain types of passes? Tell me a little bit about the kind of uh, yeah. the, the work there building those, that, those, that, those custom models. For sure. I mean, it's a, it's a core part of our business. Um, we, you know, we have more passes and more products than you might imagine. It's actually quite complicated if you are trying to self-serve sometimes. Um, and so, you know, the power of data, data-driven thinking, it's really core to our company's philosophy. This is not like an isolation. Our, our CEO, Kirsten, believes very strongly um, and has, you know, you know, sort of personally vouched and funded a lot of these initiatives. So it's really core to the way we do business. And, and yeah, if you look at our sales cycle, like, you know, you know, right now we're in past sales. What's really important to us is to, you know, if you're a returning guest, um, you know, look at your profile, look at the things you've done, and, of course, in the machine learning context, um, evaluate what types of products um, you know would sort of sustain that level of adventure and experience, and what things do we believe would enhance, uh, and make sure that we're giving those to you in a way that you know is helping simplify the portfolio, right? Because I mean, whether it's passes, whether it's resorts, it's a lot, right? It's a lot of choice. I mean, you can think going on a streaming service without the recommendations; it's a bit hard to find you know what you're looking to do. Um, and so that's been you know, a core philosophy of ours. And then you know, making sure that that extends and experience meets you as a guest where you are. Um, you know, that's not something that's really easy to say, but it's a lot harder to do to make sure that you know, across our multitude of passes, across our multitude of resorts, that when you are receiving an email from us, right, when you're receiving a push notification, when you visit our website, that we're reinforcing that same message of where we think you will enjoy your time with us, um, and that will continue. Uh, you know, as I said, into those micro moments as we recommend resorts, we recommend our ancillary products. Right? I mean, come to our mountains if you don't know how to ski. Please take a ski school lesson. Um, we believe it takes not that many to really enjoy skiing and become a lifelong customer. So that will pay for my trip, just probably in this room. <laughs> um, but but how do you choose? Right? We have a lot of different lesson products. We have a lot of rental products. So making sure that we're helping to demystify that portfolio. Um, but knowing that because we have that broad portfolio, we can really offer anybody the thing that they need, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, like, I think that's a good sort of transition to talk a little bit about the architecture bit here. Yep. Because, you know, what, I mean, what, what you're talking about there is making sure that regardless of whether they're interacting on the website or whether they're getting marketing inbound email, that they're going to have a similar, like, like they're going to have a, a consistent experience, yep. right? And so, you know, I mean, I, I tried to represent it lightly on here, but you know, the, basically the, the, the data asset is gen, that we're generating takes that identity graph, it pairs it with the models that, that, that Mitchell's been talking about here, makes it available uh, to these real-time APIs. I think one of the things that, that's been important is that, you know, interacting at the right time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with, you know, your customers. And so that data being available to the website personalization engine to grab the recommendation uh, at the beginning of a session, or the email bit to uh, you know make sure that when they make a purchase or that you know the email bit has to be more real time focused. Um, so I guess like uh, you know tell me a little bit about the the uh, how important it is to to be able to you know kind of control the timing of of, the, of these of these interactions. Yeah, it's really important. I think it's become it's becoming you know consumer expectations, guest expectations are really driving a lot of that. Um, you know, I think even just over the past couple of years, see how much technology has come into our lives as it relates to selecting experience. I mean, we couldn't talk to people for a couple of years, so you had to be able to do everything on your phone, and that's become the expectation, and that's certainly something we're driving to. But what that means is much higher fidelity signal integration. That resolution you're talking about is really critical, right? So we want to make sure that 
our analytics and data science teams are resolving guest identities the exact same way we would go market. And that has to happen as fast as a guest making a transaction, right? They buy something, it adds a new piece of information, we want to get that identity in. And you can think about the complexity of our business. We've got many food and beverage establishments on mound. We've got different stores. Like every one of those transactions, we want to make sure we stitch together. Um, and you know, to do that in a way that's not 24 or 48 hours later, right? So that we can reflect back to you the thing that you did, maybe enhance that, maybe give you information to help you find it, right? Our resorts are totally different. If you're, some of them are quite large. If you're in the wrong place, it's a long walk to go pick up your skis if you're not in the right place. So um, you're making sure we have all of those signals together, tie it to the right identity that's both evaluated from a recommendations perspective, from a measurement perspective, but then also from a marketing perspective, and it's the same data. Right, like that to me is so critical, and it's not really been something in the marketplace that's existed. Um, you, you know, a lot of the SaaS applications in general, like they're built to house your data, they're performant, they're designed to optimize the way that they operate. But what that requires you to do is ship that data to those end, you know, different endpoints. You might have different users that are not under one governance structure, so you create data points that look all different, right? Um, and you know, I think for us, being able to make decisions as quickly as we need to. Uh, having all that stuff in one place, having it move at the speed that the guest is moving. Um, you know, that's, that's one, what, what our guests are going to expect from us. It's also the standard that we hold ourselves to. Got it. Uh, I like that. I like that a lot. And so you all started off as a, you know, I mean, this has been a pretty big project for several years now. Yep. You started off as a heavy kind of Adobe shop. So tell me about like the pains that you, uh, that your organization was having that led you, because like, you know, not for nothing, you guys have effectively built your own tailored version of a marketing cloud out of this, you know, uh, and, and so, you know, we're core, core components to the way the profiles are managed and served, but like a lot of the stuff in that top box there is totally custom built and, and really built around it. And so like you, there must have been a, a, some interesting pains along the journey there that you were trying to really solve for that are just fundamental. Uh, to, to kind of make that big of a switch. Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the pains are philosophical, right? But it's hard for a business to move on philosophical pain. Um, I'm sure we've all felt that in some way or another, right? But so my belief that all data should be unified in one place, should be operating on the same identities. What it really takes is a recognition that we're actually making disjoint decisions and we're not able to provide the experience that we want to, even if the tool set you know, as you mentioned, heavy Adobe shop, even if the tool set's doing its job on paper, um, the way in which we want to interact with our guests requires a flexibility and partnership um, that allows us to d design custom experiences, even, you know, maybe even outside of the tool, make, it, make sure it's available. Um, and so, yeah, I think we ran into a couple really interesting, interesting tensions at the same time. So one was, you know, this omni-channel journey orchestration was becoming really important to our guests. We saw where we could do that well. We had high engagement, we had high conversion, um, so it's easy to follow the money there. I think we also realized that as being data-driven sort of became table stakes for our, all of our lines of business, is no longer good enough to have a good strategy. You had to support it with data that we were finding that if you talked about our marketing ecosystem as compared to our what we would you know talk in an investor presentation of you know really world class database on you know people involved in the sport, that there's actually really hard to reconcile what's in either of them, right? Because you lose some fidelity when you go to the marketing ecosystem. Do I have an email on them? Like how do these guests resolve? Are they opted in? Are they opted out? And so it became really important to us to look at that. You know, marketing is just an avenue for talking to the guest, right? But we have to do that in a way that allows our teams to see that guest from all of those angles, depending on their job, and not have to have data in different ecosystems. So I think we had, you know, very fortunately, that philosophical tension was aligned very nicely with the business tension to, you know, bring all this stuff together. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's a. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we've been working together for a while on this. When we first started, I was like, that seems ambitious, and, uh, but I've been really impressed with the way that, uh, that y'all yeah. have sort of been able to move quick on these things. There's a, there's a skiing term that you can all use now in business, which is you know, getting out over your skis, so uh, if you're a little bit too ambitious. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, I mean, just, uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about the kind of move towards the lake house bit here. Yeah. So, I mean, just for reference for everybody in the room here, the, 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 the way that this originally worked uh, when we first started working together um, was, Basically, that ETL box that was on my prior slide 
we would you know, construct a job and we would grab large pieces of data out of their data lake or out of their Databricks account and put it into Imperity storage, run all of this stuff, and then push you know, big chunks of it back into that storage for his team to use. And you know, uh, now we've, uh, you know, with the, the launch of Imperity Bridge, it's sort of created this, this, this uh, seamless interoperability where we don't have to do that big bit there. So I guess tell me a little bit about the benefits of embracing this lakehouse architecture and sort of what you're, you know, what you see as, as, as um, you know, uh, kind of future, you know, potential out of it. I mean, I, it seems like a sort of simple and intuitive concept maybe, but it's such a differentiator for the way that we do business. You know, as I mentioned, like we believe very strongly in the information supply chain should not be disjoint, should not go into different silos. All of that should fit together. We want to learn from every interaction that we have. Um, and what that means, we've got a lot of data talent that's operating either in Amparity or they're operating in Databricks, right? Um, and like, why should a data point created in one of those ecosystems not federate and be available to everyone to use, right? If, if marketing thinks that a way of categorizing a, a guest and the way in which we should talk to them is important and is performant, then that should similarly be available to our analytics and data science teams. And to do that in the past, you had to like extract data, you had to ship data places, you had to maybe like rewrite the code so it exists somewhere else, which is just like a huge governance challenge. But with the you know direct connectivity into our lake house, um, you know architecture, we're able to have that bi-directional flow of information in a way that makes it really easy for our you know talent across the board to be making impactful decisions, creating new data that's performant to the business. And, ha and having that be available, you know, as quickly as they can make it to everyone, right? And so, um, you know, it allows for a lot of flexibility. We don't have to go through like a dev cycle to update characteristics on a guest, right? We can change that table. It's available for everyone who needs to use it. Um, you know, and I think especially we, we talk about one of the unique characteristics of Amparity that is... I think really worth noting is we, you're actually at the beginning and sort of end of that marketing life cycle for us. Like it all starts with Stitch, right? Um, to resolve our guests, again, we have tons of guest data, whether through acquisition or um, transactions, and resolving that identity happens first. All of that data then becomes available to our analytics and data science teams and reporting teams. That's developing the strategy, the models, the personalization. That all gets fed to Amparity where the marketing teams are designing the audiences, the journeys, the workflows, um, you know, and then that all comes sort of back together. So the ability to do that without a copy job, right, is uh, for me, like that's, that's a huge benefit and something I'm, you know, really excited to see um, you all taking advantage of because it's, you know, sort of one of those things you didn't know how much you needed it and wanted it until it existed. Yeah, it's one of those things that I feel like, you know, is interesting because I'm sort of in the space where I'm trying to translate the value of this stuff often to less technical audiences, right? And, and it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like that sandbox is the box that I spent yeah. a little bit of time on. Like, I, I know how annoying it is to write a migration script. Like, and I want to make that not part of my day-to-day yeah. -day life because it's tedious, right? Um, but it's hard to sort of put a marketing position around that, I think, a bit. And I, so I guess, like, like, if I'm distilling a little bit of what you're describing, you know, there's the obvious bit of those copy jobs took a meaningful amount of time, big, 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 bit, of, big bit of data. And so it just eliminates that time off your workflow. But the other nuance bit there to kind of you know, highlight there is that that means that single location uh, and copy of your data, if you make that change for that one marketing team, then all the other teams get the, access, we get the benefit and you don't have yeah. to follow that up by you know, replicating that new field into seven different places. Totally. And I think that that's like saves a ton of time. Yeah, and, and for us, I mean, I mentioned that seasonal nature of our business, right? If I can reallocate our talent towards developing new functionality versus replicating existing functionality to all these platforms, like we will take advantage of that 100% of the time because we know, I mean, we have resorts that close in May and they open again in October. That's not a very long time uh, for us to plan, redistribute staff. So any day, week sprint we can get towards building a new feature is directly impacting our guests. And, and so we'll take that, yeah, any, any efficiency we can provide is, is hugely, hugely beneficial. Love it. Thank you all very much for your time. If you have other questions, feel free to see us after, and I'll be down at the Parity booth. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>